Welcome to another episode of the No More Interruption Show. It's your girl, Hazel, founder of BGI & Co. and Big Girl Interrupted. Ladies, let me tell you, it's time to join the conversation and own your journey. In this podcast, we'll explore all areas of a woman's experience with confidence, relationships, personal and professional, to employment, education, entrepreneurship, marriage, divorce. There is nothing we won't explore. And we're doing this all while we're developing a positive mindset through these experiences. Nothing is off limits here. I am so excited to have my girl, Julian, here. (laughs) (laughs) Tell the people where you're from. Tell the people. (laughs) Wow. Okay. So thank you for having me, first of all. It's such an honor um, to reconnect. and on this platform with you. I'm excited. Um, So for those who don't know me, my name is Juline, as it's listed, Butler. Um, I am a mother of three beautiful children. I'm an educator. I work for the Toronto District School Board, specifically a child and youth practitioner. Um, And uh, most importantly, I am a published children's book author of four books. That's who I am. Yay. Yay, yay. Welcome. Okay, so let's just dive right into it. Yeah. There's no sure. wasting no time. So what area in your life are you currently experiencing or have you experienced an interruption? Um, I would say <laughs> I'm say all of them. Um <laughs> Uh, and and forgive me, I've written some notes just so that I can um, stay on track. So no. I would say physically is one area um, because I have really allowed the busyness and the chaos in my life to interrupt my physical health um, mm. and being able to maintain a healthy lifestyle which for me would include, you know, getting to the gym or consistently walking, um, eating properly, um, making sure that I'm fueling my body with the nutrients and the vitamins that I need. Um, So physically is one way. Emotionally, um, actually, let me jump back. Before I go to emotionally, I want to say mentally. And I guess it can overlap emotionally as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Self-care and really um, trying to ensure that I incorporate self-care in my life consistently has been an ongoing struggle. Um, I often sort of take on everyone else's backpack and wait Mm -hmm. and sort of forget me in the midst of that. And so that's been something that has been ongoing. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm working through it. I'm trying to be better at um, saying no um, and putting myself first. Um, Mm. So that's another area. I would say um, spiritually, on a spiritual level, Uh um, you know, Prayer is very important to me and having a connection, um, you know, everyone sort of has their own, you know, I don't want to say necessarily, uh, yeah, belief system. And so for me, being a Christian woman, um, I desire to have a closer relationship with God, ensuring that um, I'm keeping prayerful in my life. And also, in addition to that, like often when we think of spirituality, we think of church or, you know, religion. Um, Mm -hmm. But I also consider the fact um, that meditating, journaling, these are all things that can be considered um, a part of, you know, spirituality. Spirituality. Yeah, that's right. And so um, I started journaling and then I find that sometimes I sort of, black off. So that's another um, area in my life, you know, Mm -hmm. where I really um, 
struggle to maintain. Um, another emotion. Mm. So that's a good one for me um, because I am the type of person that just keeps going nonstop. And I really want to be able to get to the place where it's okay to push pause. It's okay to take a break. Yeah. Um, and, and actually not feeling guilty about it. Um, that is something that I struggle with is, you know, oh gosh, like, well, if I, if I take a break, it's not going to get done. Well, right. it's okay. It's not going to get done and it should be okay. You just mm -hmm. carry it over to the next day or when you, you know, so for me, that is another area that, um, you know, I've struggled. I've struggled. Yeah. So, so with, with those struggles that you, what are some of the limiting beliefs that come up or the negative thoughts, negative mindsets that you experience throughout that? Um, I would say the negative thoughts would be like, I, the, the I can't word. Mm -hmm. I can't fit. Um, you're not good enough. Yeah. You're too much. Um, do you have what it takes? Are you capable of, you know, fulfilling this task? Um, yeah, those are some of the negative um, thoughts. And of course, a very big one is fear. The yeah. fear yeah. Feeling fearful, feeling mm -hmm. um, more concerned about what others think. Um, and not focusing on, well, it doesn't matter what other people think, what, yeah. matters, <laughs> what I think and what's important to me. So yes. some of the negative um, thoughts that would sort of try to take over and control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So then what, okay, so let's look at you, the, the areas that you highlighted in terms of our interruption and the mindset. What are yeah. some positive things that you can say right now to yourself? It doesn't mean you need to take action, but what are some positive things that you can say? Three positive things that you can say to yourself right now to start to move past, uh, creating the foundation to moving towards becoming uninterrupted. Um, positive things. So some positive yeah. uh, would be one um, that I almost feel like saying nothing tried, nothing done. Grammatically, I don't know if that's how I should be saying it, <laughs> but I kind of feel like if I don't, if you don't try, right, you'll never mm -hmm. know what the outcome right. will be. So that would you know, that would be sort of the positive thought. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Or, or you know, as I, I recall my mom saying, nothing beats a trial but a failure. So again, putting yourself out there, that would be yeah. one um, thought. I guess another positive thought would be um, knowing that ultimately, um, God for me has yeah. me. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, um, if I trust the process and I trust him, mm -hmm. um, and I do my best, um, I will be right where I need to be. That's right. Right. I mm -hmm. will be positioned where I'm supposed to be positioned. Mm -hmm. So having that faith, um, and 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 making sure that I'm thinking in that you know, in that positive mindset, um, I feel that yeah. Another thing would be, um, I want to say that just being faithful, mm -hmm. having the and trusting yourself and trusting what you know and right. um, trusting that you're going to make the best possible choices and decisions for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
would be another positive bond. Okay, you're gonna put those on sticky notes. Yeah, I love yes. that you're accountable. Yes, I'm, you're gonna put it right on a sticky note. You're gonna take a picture because that's what I'm gonna post on social media. There's yeah. your accountability. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, with with your podcast episode when it comes out to show that you did it. <laughs> people need to take action. Yes. And if you don't have anybody holding you accountable, then yeah. you won't. Right. Right. You're right. And also, like for like okay, for me with accountability, it. Yes, accountability has to come from you internally. It, it has to be your internal motivation, right. but you have to start somewhere. Yes. Right. So once you you how you know you have that person to be accountable yes. to you, they're expecting something from you. You're gonna do it. Right. And then it will start to build the habit, your habit muscle of accountability is what you right. need to keep pushing through. Right. Mm. Okay. So with that accountability, let's head into yeah. your life goals. So. What are some of your life goals? What do you got going on? Oh gosh. Okay, so um my life goals. Mm -hmm. I I would really like to further my studies post secondary. I'd like to go back to school. Okay. For social work. Ah. Um and I have to be why? very, why? Yeah. I think I'd like to, I love working with young people. I love working with youth, mm -hmm. but I've been working with the board for 21 years. Um, and I feel there's always room for knowledge, new growth, new learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think I'm ready to take the next step. Um, social work for me is not just working with a young person and family. Right. So you're sort of working with a whole community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a child and youth practitioner, you do have opportunities to work with the community, but right. your, your goal, the main focus is the young person. Yes. And yeah. then looking at how everyone else works, I guess, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, how everyone else in that young person's life sort of uh, works in what's the word I'm in conjunction with mm -hmm. the young person. person. Yeah. So right. So I'd like to be able to spread my wings. I want to work with you know the young person, the family, perhaps mm -hmm. maybe looking at working with elderly, working mm -hmm. with different capacities. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's one of my goals. It's been a thought for a very long time, uh -huh. um, but I'm moving closer to completing an actual application. <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. good, 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 good. Yeah. So that's one of the goals. Um, another goal that um, I have is to eventually get to the place where, and you sort of spoke it into the atmosphere, <laughs> I would like to have a podcast. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to focus on anxiety right. or mental health and sort of an opportunity for, you know, parents to chime in with questions and, mm -hmm. and speakers um, perhaps professionals within that um, field that will come on and sort of share their experience, share their knowledge um, and expertise. So that's another goal. Okay, now my big question is why do you want it, this podcast? And that's a good question. Um, I love the why questions because I think it's important to really know why you're doing what you're doing you're doing yep if a lot of people are doing the same thing right yeah. so my why is um for a number of reasons i think personally uh -huh. it's to help me step out of my comfort zone and for mm. me to challenge myself more i feel that i have the potential um 
and having a platform there that's going to force me into the situation <laughs> will help sort of chip off, you know, the layers of fear and anxiety and self-doubt mm -hmm. and all those thoughts that come to sort of control and mm -hmm. limit us. Um, yeah. And then in addition to that, I really like the idea of um, more conversation. Mm -hmm. I find that especially culturally, um, we don't talk about some topics that are relevant to our lives, that impact yeah. our families. And um, I feel that people could, families, individuals mm -hmm. could benefit from knowing that you're not alone. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. um, don't have to sort of deal with or cope in isolation. There mm -hmm. are other people that could benefit from hearing, oh, I've been through this. Right. Look at where I am now, right? And so um, that's one of the things that I'm really hoping um, to do is, you know, have the opportunity again to create an atmosphere where we can talk about some of the uncomfortable topics mm -hmm. um, and, you know, um, in general, there's just more conversation, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that's that's really, and it's important because we are, especially our Caribbean community, is uh, drink some bush. <laughs> oh, that's our fix. That's oh, our, yeah. oh, yeah. our fix, right? Drink some bush, drink some tea. <laughs> yeah, drink some tea. I mean, as you say that, I remember having a conversation with my mom about an ailment. And I was on the floor in hysterics when she said, do you have any Vicks? Just rub yeah. some. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, the tip in the Vicks was for like, you know, the vapors, like rubbing, you know, like if you have a chest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, no, this is where we draw the line. <laughs> So, Vicks yeah. and tea can cure anything. I mean, I appreciate that culturally this is what, what you know is what you give, you right? Know. Right, exactly. But, and I'm sure we're going to use it with, uh, like, we use it with our children. And we're, we're going to use it with their grandchildren. Absolutely. Because it's, it's a go-to. It's part of who we are. It's That's our right. makeup, right? right. So, but I think And I don't think we should get rid of it. But. No. I think in saying that though, we also mm -hmm. have to, <laughs> we also have to like have more of an awareness of yes. you know, what else is out there, right? right. How right. do you treat other things, you know? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. So with your goals yes. now and you have interruptions, so do you have a reset plan? So a reset plan. Now I've never done one and I don't have one. And I'm, mm -hmm. I think I'm curious to know more about what a reset plan is. I mean, it sounds self-explanatory, but mm -hmm. I don't make the assumption. I, I sort of, when I hear reset, I think, okay, we push pause and then we go back to something that perhaps we didn't finish mm -hmm. and we start over, we reset. You know, mm -hmm. we start over and sort of reevaluate, reassess, mm -hmm. and then you revisit. I could be wrong. So I'm going <laughs> to nope. turn the floor over to the expert. <laughs> to the expert. <laughs> um, so there's different names for it. Everybody has like different names. However, right. in my teaching and in my workshops, we call it a reset plan. So we take, so this interview has gone through the, the way that I funnel, I create my workshops, but right. then when we get to the reset plan, it's all about now that you have your goals, um, life interruptions are going to show up Absolutely. and it's a proactive tool. As you know, as a CYC practitioner, we need proactive tools. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so as a proactive tool, we need to create a reset plan, right? right. So that when another interruption shows up in your life, you could focus on that interruption because sometimes 
you have to stop everything that you're working on, especially when yeah. we're really focused on our goals. We have to stop and we need to focus on that interruption. Give it all that we can. And then right. once it's done, how do you reset yourself to get back and start working back on your goals? So having a reset plan with things like um, some people have like going for a walk. I have like a 30 day journal thing that I go through and I'll ask myself to get my like mindset shifted and shift me back to what I need to work on, what I'm focused on. Um, Sometimes it's listening to a bunch of specific podcasts. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people, it's all the different, like whatever thing that's going to one, give you back that energy, especially if that interruption drains you, what is going to lift you up again and fill your cup up again to get you started, to get motivated um, to the direction that you were focused on. Right. And so, so I, I think with that, then with saying that my, you know, for me, um, if I can reflect back on interruptions that have occurred in my life and, you know, what I did to be able to move forward, um, I think is number one, um, giving myself that time to um, ensure that I'm ready. Yeah. And once I feel that I'm ready, setting some goals. Okay. So what do I want to see happen? Mm -hmm. Um, Where do I go from here? This is where I am. Where do I go? What Mm -hmm. do I need to do to move to the next step? And really being very gentle about it and um, being okay with the time period. Because I feel that easily um, my thinking could be like, okay, I'm ready to go. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm ready to write my next book. Right. Right. Um, But it won't necessarily work that way. So really embracing the baby steps, setting Mm -hmm. some concrete goals about where I am and where I'd like to be and what I think I need to do to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, And also being okay with the fact that interruptions may still appear. Yep. Right. And so being okay with the possibility of having to, the goal is not to take two steps backwards. Right. Being okay with, I may need to pause again, Mm -hmm. right? Kind of like, I remember a point in time in my life where, um, you know, I was in a vehicle uh, collision. And um, in addition to that, I was going through a very hard time at work and dealing with a lot of like stress. Mm -hmm. And I remember needing to take time off, you know, Um, to heal. But my time off sort of turned into a stress leave. And I remember that because of uh, me being so concerned with um, needing to, using the word, reset, Mm -hmm. get back to, you know, normalcy then, um, I rushed the process. And when I got there, I realized that you're not ready. Mm. And so I had to revert. And yep. so I think part of that whole idea of resetting is, again, um, being comfortable with the idea that you may not be ready. That's right. And I mean, and, and you know, that doesn't, it's not a bad thing. I think it's just the process. So, yeah. yeah, so I think for me, it would be just, you know, um, ensuring that I'm ready. And if I'm not understanding what that means mm-hmm. um, and looking at my goals and mm-hmm. where I'd like to be and how, um, what steps I need to take to get there. Mm-hmm. And then to that, I think um, incorporating, you know, the meditating or being, mm-hmm. you know, sort of being silent or, yeah. pre- you know, like just really um, using the time to reflect 
Um, perhaps, you know, the, I like the going for the walks and, and that's something that I could see myself doing or, you know, um, sitting in silence, as I said, I think that's a big one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And really thinking, really thinking about um, what things are going to look like and how they're going to be different and will they be different? And, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's sort of where my thoughts are with regards to resetting. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So now you need to start doing it. You need to have a plan. <laughs> okay. So do you celebrate yourself? Not enough. Um, I think I could definitely do it more. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, it really depends on what celebration looks like. Um, I think that's a very good question. Do you celebrate yourself? Well, I do spend time trying to do the things that I enjoy. I do try to reward myself when mm -hmm. I feel that, you know, like, yeah, you've accomplished everything on your to-do list. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. It's okay to do something that you'd like to do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think that there's room for more celebration. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't need to be big. Yeah. It's your celebration. It's the way you want it to be. Right. Right. Like that. Because I think when you think of the word celebration, we think of bells think and whistles. This, yes. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be. It just needs right? to be your celebration. That's right. Like, the celebration of your next book coming out. Like, what's right. the plan for that? What is that going right. to look like? Right. And it can be simply yeah. going for an ice cream. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I love that. And I think the unfortunate thing is sometimes you get so caught up with life mm -hmm. and, you know, everyone else that you lose that. You're, yeah. You just kind of go with the flow of things but you're not really soaking it in like wow mm -hmm. i've you know i've made this huge accomplishment so um allowing yourself to feel that yes and yes. i'd like to do that i i don't mm -hmm. know if even with being an author like i feel like i'm just kind of sometimes in that mode of just okay i'm done this book you know mm -hmm. it's off to the print shop but really not really paying attention to like wow like it says your name like juline butler like <laughs> yeah. you know like if you look this up like if you look up the name that's on me. google that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that's huge right yeah so, um i agree that celebrating um is something um that i'd like to do a lot more of we talk about celebrating the students that we work with um mm -hmm. and celebrating each other but yeah we focus on celebrating you know yourself so yourself. Yeah. yeah yeah so how can people connect with you in terms of your book yourself to reach out to you to speak yeah. <laughs> well unfortunately <laughs> I'll put my website out there because mm -hmm. um it should be going live, I want to say, within probably the next two weeks. Um, okay. So it's Juline, J-U-L-E-N-E, -E, Butler, mm -hmm. B-U-T-L-E-R, books.ca. Okay. So that's and then the you're on Instagram. We'll put all your contacts in the show notes, but yeah. she's on Instagram. Is, are you on TikTok? I'm not on TikTok yet. Okay. I like the yet. I like the yet. Yes, I'm not on TikTok yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, IG, uh, Juline Butler dot author. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I will also put out my email. So Juline Butler 40 at gmail dot com. If, you know, um, anyone wants to connect directly with regards to, as Hazel mentioned, workshops. Um, Speaking. You know, speaking engagements or the purchasing of, you know, the books. Books, yeah. Um, yeah, you can send me a direct email. Yay. Okay, so how I like to wrap things up. Yeah. This was a very good conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you. And it was actually really good to connect.
Yes. Um, it's rapid fire time. Are you ready? Oh God. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Easy, easy, easy. Um, so what are two to three action steps that you would recommend to another woman right now experiencing an interruption? Um, two to three rapid steps. Um, being a woman who believes in, I mean, everyone may have, you know, different faiths, um, or religious belief. Um, mm -hmm. I believe in prayer. Um, and so that's the tool that I use. And so I'm going to pass that on. Um, so prayer would be number one. Mm -hmm. Um, having faith in the midst of the circumstance and knowing that oftentimes the challenges, the interruptions are there to build us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and bring strength in the midst of it. It doesn't feel that way, but often um, when you jump over that hurdle or yeah. that interruption, um, a light goes off and you recognize that, wow, like, you know, you gain some skills, you gain some strength, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some knowledge. Um, so that would be the second one. Um, and I think the third, it should actually be the first, but I think at the end of the day, putting yourself first, taking care of you, Mm -hmm. um and loving on you yeah yeah because if you don't love on yourself it's going to be very difficult to love anyone else, anyone else. So yeah you put you first and i have to i have to tell myself that daily as well you yeah i have to look in the mirror and face it too so don't worry yeah you're your number one cheerleader right <sighs> yeah yeah yeah, and you can't expect the other people to cheer you on if you don't even know what you're cheering yourself on for, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so someone who inspires you. Who inspires you? My mom. My mom. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> um, my mother is a huge inspiration. Um, and I think what inspires me the most is... Um, her lessons um, with, again, being very prayerful, her faith in God, her faith that despite the struggle, you know, mm -hmm. she's going to keep going. Um, I, and, and again, I'm sure a lot of, um, you know, we see our mothers, Black women, they struggle and they work so hard. And that's what I... That was my experience, how hard she worked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's retired now, but always so faithful, always so optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, you're struggling with your 10 grocery bags, but you're still moving. <laughs> going, yep. <laughs> still going, right? <laughs> so not never giving up. Mm -hmm. You know, and having yeah. that level of faith that, you know what? I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. I think this, you know, yeah. there is a higher being that has me. So my mother. Yeah. Beautiful. And what's a non-negotiable in your life? Disrespect. Mm. And I really have a difficult time with um, not allowing people to feel validated. Everyone's mm -hmm. voice is imp important. Um, I feel that you may not agree with someone mm -hmm. because we're all different people. We have different ways of thinking. Right. But it's important to recognize what another person is experiencing or feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's so mm -hmm. validating, not validating mm -hmm. other person's feelings. That's true. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
You went deep in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so what's your go-to self-care activity or experience? Um, if you don't have one, you need to make one now. Go to self care activity or mm -hmm. experience. I would say I enjoy listening to smooth jazz that calms me down. Yeah. I love to just, I love chill. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to involve a glass of wine, but it can, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, yeah, I, I love to relax. Um, I would say that even just taking a drive with no particular destination. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, I love that. I love looking at, interesting, I'm not a nature type camping person, but I appreciate the trees. I love mm -hmm. to listen to, you know, and this is where going for walks is beneficial. The birds chirping. Yep. The sound of the cars driving on the road, nature, the mm -hmm. environment. So that really helps me sort of reset. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Um, your all of your interruptions, your experiences, uh, your knowledge, your skills with us. I'm so thank you. Thank you for being my friend oh, after how many years? Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Um, and it's funny, the last question I was like. I, in my head, I, I hear your voice. And I, I remember you telling me one time, Hazel, don't get mixed up in that pasa pasa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where we were. I think it was like at one of the group homes we worked at. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> <So funny. laughs> oh, that's all I would hear. Hazel. <laughs> that's oh, pasa, pasa. <laughs> but up. yes, thank you, thank you, thank yes, you, thank, thank you. you. This means thank so much. You. Yes, thank you. Yay. So we are done, right? Yes, hold on. <laughs>